Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, we're going to be getting a little bit more into the art of the Renaissance, okay? Um, and, and so we've already touched on this a little bit. It's just kind of like an overview. Today, we're going to go in a little deeper on new techniques, uh, new subjects, um, uh, some of the artists themselves, things like that. So here we go. So um, like I, I just said, is there were some new techniques that were developed during the Renaissance. And these techniques are still being used today. Uh, and, and so one of the main ones I want to focus on is the idea of perspective, okay? And what this did is allowed painters to show dimension and depth in their paintings. Um, before this, you, if, you, if you've played the old Mario games, I'm talking in the old ones, like Super Nintendo, and you're going, and you're running along and just Mario just runs across the screen like this. There, there's no going forward or backwards. It's just side to side. Uh, that is what painting had been before. They, before this, uh, the, the technique of perspective was um, found, invented, whatever you want to call it. And so this will let people to show some depth. So people are behind other people and you can tell they're like a little ways behind. They're really close behind them, things like that. Uh, and so that was, that was come up with then. And so that, that really changed how people could do some stuff with their paintings. Um, another new thing that happened in the time were the uh, subjects that were being painted. So before this, realistically, the, the most paintings, the subjects were religious in nature. And I'm not saying there were not religious subjects in the Renaissance paint, paintings, I should say. Um, but there were new subjects being painted, and one of the most famous of these new subjects that came from the time is the Mona Lisa, which we will be getting into here in a little bit when we talk about its painter. Uh, so some of, those are some of the new painting techniques. There was also some new techniques in uh, sculpting. And so what happened is sculptors, they started to be able to produce more realistic carvings. And they did this because they started using more natural postures. Um, and they also worked, found ways to um, actually carve expressions into the, in the, in the sculptures to show the personality of the person, okay? So it's kind of weird to think that a, um, a, a, a sculpture can have personality, but it can definitely have personality if you show facial features that are smiling or upset or whatever like that. It gives some sort of personality, all right? So now we're going to get into the artists. Uh, the first one I'm going to cover, uh, and he is considered by many to be the greatest artist of all, of all time, is Michelangelo, okay? He was a painter, he was a sculptor, sculptor, and sculptor. Oh, sorry, I can't talk today. It's been a weird morning. And an architect, okay? So, and his most famous works are the Sistine Chapel and the Statue of David, okay? The Sistine Chapel, um, I, I've seen things where he literally would build these scaffolds up to where he's right underneath the, 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 the ceiling, he's laying on his back painting, okay? Uh, if you were here, you guys would be actually doing that under your desk today, uh, but you're not. So you can go ahead and try it if you want. Go under like a table or something like that, tape a piece of paper there and draw on your back. And that's how he had to paint the Sistine Chapel and the Statue of David. Uh, and this was just a really um, amazingly detailed statue that really showed what you could do when you were going for realism, okay? So that, that's Michelangelo. Next, we have Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci, okay? This, he was considered the ultimate Renaissance man, okay? And a Renaissance man is just the term given for someone who is very good at many different things. Um, actually, you probably already did some work on this earlier today, so you should hopefully already know what that is. Um, so, yeah. Okay, uh, sorry, I got lost for a second again. Uh, so again, he was many, good at many different things. I mean, da Vinci was a painter, he was a scientist, an inventor, a sculptor, and an engineer. Okay, we're still finding, people are still going through his books and things like that for his inventions and things like that. And a lot of the stuff he invented is actually around today, uh, but he may have not have been able to make it work back then, but his drawings laid some of the foundation for things. And you, you go back and look, and you're like, oh, that's in his notebook. He thought of that hundreds and hundreds of years before it was ever actually be able to be created. Okay? Um, and so then for, for him, his most famous works are the Mona Lisa uh, and the Last Supper. I'm sure you've all seen these somewhere. Okay, I'm not saying that you know exactly what they are, but you've probably seen them. Okay? So the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper are uh, da Vinci's um, most famous works. Uh, so then there was another one. This one was younger. So Michelangelo and da Vinci are kind of around the same time period. 
Um, then the next one coming through uh, was named Raphael. And so he actually learned from studying Da Vinci and Michelangelo. Okay. And so he took, he, so, and so, so he was able to learn from them and what they were doing in their new techniques. And then he advanced the idea of realism in his paintings. Okay. So his paintings appeared so lifelike. All right. And so that was one thing that he really pushed the, the boundaries on was realism. And so now actually I want to switch roles a little bit. We're still going to talk about artists, but um, we're going to talk about women. All right. And so women's role in Renaissance society was generally very restricted. Okay. It was like you took care of the house and the kids. That was it. Now they're, they, you know, you might have helped on the farm and things like that, but for the most part, there was very restricted on what women can do. And only a very few became painters. Uh, and, and so a couple, I want to touch on two of them. Uh, so the first one is Sofonisla Anguissola. Okay. Uh, and she was the first to gain international reputation for her portraits um, and her paintings. Okay. And so she mostly did portraits. Okay. That was her, her, her main thing. And she started, you know, she, she has some that people saw for, of her sisters, but she also did others um, of prominent people, such as King Philip II of Spain. All right. And so she was a uh, uh, one of the few women who actually was able to break through in this time where they weren't able to. Uh, let's see. Another prominent female painter was uh, Artesmia Jadaleski. Okay, we're going to go with that. Uh, and she was, again, it's hard to break through, but she, her, her, her calling card, her, her main thing she painted were actually pictures of strong, heroic women, which weren't normal in this time, okay? They're the idea of a strong, heroic woman back in the, the 1300s isn't something that many people thought of. Today, we see it all the time. But back then, it, it wasn't something that you saw in society. All right. So that's it for today's uh, video. Uh, I hope you're all well. Make sure you've taken notes. I can guarantee you some of these will be upcoming uh, on a quiz that you're going to have on Friday. Uh, that's just a weekly review quiz. You'll be able to use all your notes, all your assignments, everything you have. You can use them. I'm just making sure that you were able to get the information. And I will have a review video coming out uh, Thursday afternoon. All right. Hope you're all doing well. Have a good day. I will see you tomorrow.